Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and look what I've done. I have actually dismantled my whole equipment. Why did I dismantle my whole equipment? Well, I dismantled it for you, just for you, so that I will be able to assemble it piece by piece going forward. So today is not raining for once. Um, it's going to be cloudy at night because of course it is going to be cloudy at night. What did you expect? It's Tokyo in summer. Um, it is brutally hot and brutally humid. Uh, it is almost 2 p.m. So I really shouldn't be outside, but I am again just for you. So I have all of the equipment that I will be, be that I will be putting together here. Obviously, you recognize the uh, all of the pieces that really we've been talking about in the 10, 11, I don't remember how many episodes of starting astrophotography for lazy people. And this is the culmination of everything. So we have things like this beautiful Newtonian telescope. I love it. This uh, mount, the EQ6R, which is really good, especially for its price. Um, so tripod mount. I also have uh, a spreader for the tripod. Uh, that was originally made for an AVX tripod, so for a different tripod, so it doesn't fit perfectly, but it kind of works. I have all sorts of power adapters and cables and DC splitters and USB cables and uh, dew heaters and zip ties, or uh, as someone from uh, Vogue magazine would call it, tweezers. Don't ask me why. I also have some uh, grip gloves as well to be able to screw and screw out the equipment as necessary. I have screwdrivers, hexagonal and Phillips type. I have my camera, my main imaging camera, a 1600mm cool. I have my uh, guider, the, Sky the Skywatcher uh, Evo Guide 50ED. I have my filter wheel with my filters pre um, uh, put in them. I have my uh, ZWEAF, the uh, actual what is it the uh, focuser the electronic focuser i have my computer i have mounting equipment i have uh the co uh, the co <laughs> i have my coma corrector for the vixen mute fortunately this did not do any damage uh the, so the floor here for some reason is actually fairly soft which as you may um, no, it's not really good for us for photography, but whatever. Uh, so coma corrector and I have some boxes so I can actually show you how everything works. You can also see that I have sunscreen, absolutely critical. I have some uh, adapters. I have drinks, uh, which serves two purposes. One, so that I am extremely careful not to spill it on all the rest, on all of the equipment, and two, to hydrate myself. And so we're going to get started and, uh, you know, put together, to put everything together. I do not know how long it's going to take, so I think this episode will be uh, divided into multiple episodes uh, because I don't really want to have like a, a giant two-hour long episode, but uh, we'll be building that uh, piece by piece. And uh, fortunately, there is something to guide us, gravity. We have to obey gravity, it's the law, which means that I will start with the tripod and the mount, which only makes sense. Also, during these videos, you will notice that I have officially sold out. Well, no, I haven't sold out, but uh, I have uh, been uh, approached by OPT from uh, Oceanside Photo and Telescope, ah, OPT Corp. Um, so uh, I will be... Um, also, most of the items that you see here, I'll be leaving a link in the description if you feel like you want to buy any of those items and you want to support me as a YouTuber so I could buy more material to review, all right, all that kind of stuff. Uh, please feel free to buy from the links below. Um, I am very clear this is an affiliate uh, program and I will still give you all of my uh, impressions and all of uh, my uh, dr the drawbacks that I see with all of my equipment. Uh, I am not married to any brand. I am not married to o OPT and I will, you know, keep um, calling equipment I don't like uh, hot pieces of garbage, for example. Uh, which is not really the case. Uh, I've mellowed, uh, in my opinion, of this, this piece, of, piece of equipment. So uh, don't worry, uh, I haven't really sold out. I am still going to give you my opinion on all of the equipment I get. I do not have any preference for any brand whatsoever. Um, so just for information, if you want to support me and you want to buy one of the items, please click on the links uh, down below. So let's get started. We'll start with the tripod and with the mount. So 
let me replace the camera and I'll see you in a moment. So first things first, we have the tripod. So the tripod came with my mount. So some mounts actually do not come with tripods. So you need to buy it separately. In this case, we do have a decent tripod that came with the mount. Now you will see that on the tripod, there's a little knob. Um, this uh, this black thing here and this black thing you really want to point it towards the north and for me north is in di this direction and ideally for me actually i'd want to point to make the the black this black knob be on this uh, side of the mount on the on the other side of the mount so that it is above a leg that would be pointing north um, that way you know the tripod can never tip over regardless of how much counterweight you have going on. Uh, but by default, at least for me, uh, the knob was in this position and seems to be locked with Loctite or something like that. So I'm not easily able to move it to the other side. I don't care that much. Uh, so we'll keep it as is. Um, but, you know, let's uh, get the, uh, the the tripod pointed north. Now, I have those little uh, slabs there, which are for me not to um, damage the... Um, uh, the water repellent kind of paint that I have on my balcony. After all, this is a wooden house. Um, so I have those just to protect my uh, equipment and to give a stable base. So with that, let me Okay, so that, uh, that is easy, right? So we have the tripod mounted. I've spreaded it as much as I can. And the next step will be to use uh, the tripod spreader, which has some holes for eyepieces, by the way, to just uh, basically make that tripod more or less tight. We're not gonna tighten it too much because we'll want to have some slackness to actually put the mount on uh, later on. So I just uh, slide that in after removing the screw and the washer from the bottom or the knob and the washer from the bottom. And then I'll just be um, screwing that in until it is at the level of uh, the spreader. Uh, something like that is actually decent. It's hanging like that. Um, and the reason is I want to be able to push this uh, upwards so that it will actually screw this. There's a little uh, screw here that will screw into uh, the mount. Okay, so uh, let me get the mount and we're gonna mount the mount on top of this. Mount the mount, absolutely. Okay, so here I am, the tripod is here, the mount is here. So what we want to do in preparation, actually, so this mount is actually quite heavy and quite unwieldy. It's a bit difficult to, to take. But if you look at uh, here, there are two big screws. You want to unscrew them as much as possible because they're basically going to go around this knob here. So you'll want to make some space so that you can actually slide this in very smoothly. So here we go. Uh... Okay. And the mount is in and you can see it can pivot up to those the screws. So this will be used for the fine adjustment when polar lining. So polar lining, as you remember, is basically make sure that the axis here is parallel to the Earth's rotation axis. Uh, I have a great video on how to do polar alignment using SharpCap Sharp Pro, uh, which I'm linking to uh, above if you are interested. Okay, so we are now properly uh, set. So you see I've, I've uh, closed in those two screws. This is so that the mount is stable even though I haven't uh, screwed this one in. So what I'm going to do now is, oh you can see me, yes, uh, I'm hiding behind my mount because I'm shy. And uh, I'm going to just screw in from the bottom into uh, the mount itself. Uh, so this is what the, uh, the tripod really does. And uh, takes a while. Okay, and now I'm screwed into the tripod. You can see that now my, spr my spreader is actually at the wrong angle, so I have to unscrew, and now I can actually fully screw the spreader in. So when you actually fully screw the spreader in, you will hear the mouth actually moving a little bit, because, yeah. <laughs> so that's basically all the spreading that was not properly done by me with my puny uh, arms. So here we are, the mount is on. And uh, for me, 
it's pointed towards uh, the north. And what you will want to do is, um, it's not on this side, but it's on the other side. Just take my word for it. So depend on, depending on the mount, you have um, an angle indicator on one side, and you will want to put that angle to uh, what your latitude is. Is it latitude or longitude? I think it's latitude. I, don't, don't ask me, I, I keep like mixing it, mixing up the two. And so I've put it for me at 35 degrees already. And you actually, it's probably better to set it before you even put in the mount. But that's just, you know, for information. So now uh, we are with the mount properly put on. I am going to unscrew this screw here, which will make magically a counterweight bar beam appear out of nowhere. Magic trick, haha, <laughs> the prestige. Uh, so here we are, it is, wow, the wind. Let me put on the jacket so that you don't hear too much the wind noise. Well, that jacket is not gonna help with my sweat, but <laughs> look how far I am willing to sacrifice myself for you. Um, okay, so we have the mount on, and the next step really is to put uh, the um, optical tube assembly on, but before that, uh, you will want to put on the counterweights. And the reason for that is that you do not want to put your ODA, your OTA on without counterweights, because if for some reason this uh, knob was loose and it can actually slip even when it's not loose, then you could put the uh, OTA on and then immediately the tripod does this and smashes the OTA into the tripod, which, you know, for a new OTA would be kind of a shame, wouldn't it? Um, it has not happened to me yet, but you know, I don't exclude the uh, possibility. So we're gonna remove this little uh, screw at the end of our counterweight shaft. I like to call it the toe defender. Um, and we are going to slide counterweights in. So I'm just gonna uh, make sure that I slide those in. Come on, there you are. And this mount actually comes with two such, I think five kilo uh, counterweights. So we'll put the second one as well. Now uh, the counterweights, by the way, they have, those ones have a little uh, plastic, um, black plastic thing inside. Others have one half of the counterweight, sh counterweight hole here, or shaft hole, whatever you call it, that is wide and the other half that is much narrower. So you want to put the wide part po pointing downwards. And the reason for that is that the wide part can actually go all the way to the toe defender. So you can actually like slide the counterweight a bit more lower than uh, otherwise, which means that you can actually, you know, um, use slightly um, heavier equipment. <sighs> okay. We have the counterweights on. Feels like we're making progress here. Uh, so, uh, for me, my next step would be to put uh, the TPI uh, tripod spreader. Um, so uh, it's typically not something would, you would do, but this is something that enhances stability. I might put it as a bonus video at some point. I'm not going to do it right now. I want to stay close to what you guys will likely be having. So we now have the mount properly set up. Uh, you can see that I have some uh, slack or some backlash in the RA axis, which is kind of fine. Um, when you do that, you can feel it moving even if you're tight. Uh, this is because of uh, a backlash, but also because the counterweight bar is not um, super tight. Okay, so this mount, um, the uh, Skywatcher EQ6R uh, Pro or EQ6R, depends on the region you are in apparently. It's, I love this mount, it's really good. Uh, it's not perfect. It typically has a bit of backlash in RA, quite a bit of backlash in declination. It can be um, enhanced. The, the uh, um, what is it? The uh, lubricant in there is not the best. Um, the uh, shoe to hold everything is not the best either, but it works well. It guides well. It is at a reasonable price for its payload, although it is quite heavy uh, for what it is. And, um, but yeah, for its price, I really like uh, this thing. I kind of regret maybe getting like the SEM60 instead from Ioptron, but the SEM60 is more expensive and especially in Japan, it's much more expensive. 
So that's my mount. Uh, it's one of the most uh, used mounts in uh, amateur astrophotography. So if you think this is something that you would like and you want to buy it, please go down in the description below um, if you wish to support me and using the link uh, down below. And now that we have set up this beautiful mount, uh, we'll, we're ready to go to the OTA. Uh, but, you know, um, I think it is a good time to do a break. So I'm going to get some rest, uh, uh, gulp some water down. Uh, it's been getting uh, um, windy so I have to put on this jacket so you can actually hear my voice uh, but this is a nice uh, point I think to stop the video so for the moment we've looked at the whole material that we're going to put together we've installed the tripod we've installed the mount everything is tight we are able to like uh, adjust the mount as necessary uh, you've seen that I have a video uh, on how to do the polar alignment so you'll know how to do that and now uh, we are ready for the OTA but I'm gonna stop so uh, you'll have to wait for the next video sorry about that so if you are not subscribed and this kind of content interests you and I have tons of other types of contents all linked to astronomy astrophotography whether it's equipment reviews or uh, technical in-depth kind of videos about gain and offset and exposure times and that kind of stuff or uh, if it's about like uh, setting up your equipment or um, software tutorials like for Nina or for PixInsight have all sorts of content if that sounds like it could interest you uh, please feel free to go down and uh, click on the subscribe button maybe also consider clicking on the notification bell so that you will be warned when I have the next video in this series up and uh, I hope this is being useful. Uh, please don't hesitate, of course, to go down below and check uh, the comments and write some comments as you like. Check also my affiliate links for uh, the uh, material log like dismount. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.